Well, I hadn't really planned on recording today, but oh boy, we got a new OBS release client tonight. I'm recording this at almost midnight on Saturday. Who knows when this video will go up, but we got a new OBS release client for version 26. It's been a while since the last update, and this one is pretty major, but we're going to cover all of the major features, show you how they look like in the software, as well as a couple bug fixes and some features that are coming up, but maybe not in this update that I am very excited for. So let's jump in after a word from this video sponsor, which is myself and our Discord server over at eplusfox.gg slash Discord. Did you know we have a free downloads channel that we added recently where you can get cool stuff like an 8K ready Photoshop document with a classic 2008 style YouTube layout. We've got uh, my first stream pack of transitions and overlays and stuff like that for your live stream for, full of analog vibes that I ran through a real VHS tape, as well as some scripts for Vegas Pro and a whole lot of other stuff. We'll be adding more each week. So come join us, check out the free downloads and chat with us if you want to chat about streaming, retro gaming, nerdy stuff in general, or get help with your live stream. Again, that's eplusvox.gg slash discord. So first and foremost, OBS Studio will now have native virtual camera support within the software so that the plugin is no longer necessary. This is initially only launching on Windows. Other operating systems will be added and updated as they're ready, according to Jim. So it's starting with a Windows release for everyone working from home and all of that, and then they will get out the other operating systems as soon as they can. This is pretty cool. The plugin was always not always the most stable thing in the world. It was prone to crashing. I had a lot of weird hiccups with it, but it was a very helpful plugin to have. And it's kind of amusing that they're switching away from it because I'm pretty sure the implementation that Streamlabs OBS just got, they just launched and were advertising they had virtual camera support now shipping with it, was an integration of that plugin from OBS Studio. And this is kind of a rework of that tool and a better result. So. Streamlabs OBS is behind as usual. <laughs> Secondly is the coolest thing in the world. We get a source toolbar for easy access to controls for the selected sources. And that also gets paired with media controls for media sources. So slideshows, media sources, and VLC media sources will now have controls for playback. So you have a full basically context-based toolbar that allows you full control over pretty much all of your sources. It is absolutely mind blowing. So you can see here, if I select a source in my sources list, I have this control bar down at the top, at the bottom that shows that I have selected a video capture device. I can quickly access the properties to access, you know, UVC controls, change the settings. I can access filters at one click of a button. I can also just simply change what device is selected altogether. And I have a quick access for quickly activating and deactivating the source in case anything's wrong with it and I need to refresh it real quick, which is absolutely insane. This is the coolest thing in the world. And if I select image source, well, then I can change what the image file is. I can address, you know, properties, what have you. And coming back to my primary scene here, now I have a black magic device. I can come into properties and access it. Like it's set up. Th this is just my, my mind is blown. This is awesome. This is going to be so handy. I was requesting something like this. I still hope they can integrate a kind of dock for the UVC controls for your webcams and capture devices so you can change brightness and contrast and stuff while looking at it integrated into OBS. But this is really freaking cool. Next up, they have added a noise suppression filter that is AI based and performs significantly better, both in quality and your actual performance for removing background noise in your microphone. It's called RN noise. And I'll have a sample of it here with my air conditioner running. So here's how my microphone sounds with the AC running in the background with no noise suppression applied at all. Here's how my microphone sounds with the AC running in the background with the default original noise suppression algorithm in OBS Studio. Here's how my microphone sounds with the AC running in the background with the new RN noise algorithm applied. Test, test, one, two. And for those of you who may have it, this is what my microphone sounds like with the AC running in the background using RTX voice. Set, up, set to about 50%. Next is a huge one. They have finally changed the default color mode for OBS Studio to actually operate in from Rec. 709 and 601 to sRGB. This means a lot more accurate colors. It means <laughs> something they should have honestly done a long time ago, IMO. Uh, it's been debated for a while. They were, they've been working on it for a long time. Uh, but this provides much more accurate color representation and colors that will translate both the web browsers and you know players as well as your video editors much more directly whereas some people had some issues with it translating back and forth srgb has been the way to go 
and they're doing it finally, which is awesome. Next, you can now set up a hotkey to take screenshots of previews, scenes, and sources on the fly. This has been a feature that OBS has lacked its entire lifespan, and I've never understood why. It has never made sense to me. They have finally added it in so you can take screenshots within OBS to save full res, you know, pictures of whatever you're working on. This is useful when I'm making thumbnails for videos. This is useful when I'm just getting screenshots for, you know, things to show what's happening on screen when I just need a screenshot and having to use a third party screen application, you know, screenshot application, especially when running OBS as admin where you can't hit print screen while OBS is in focus has been mind boggling. But I am so glad that they have finally added this. Next up, they have two audio changes th that they've integrated here. One is that there is a percentage uh, toggle for changing the volume of sliders so you can you know, actually see what that is based on percentages instead of just dB. You can also, uh, they also update at 60 Hertz instead of 30 Hertz now. So previously, you know, the, the, the audio meter bouncing was kind of choppy and it was, it had more, you literally ran at half the speed in terms of latency by running at 30 hertz. Running at 60 hertz, I'm looking at it now, it's way smoother and way more responsive, which is really cool. You can now disable anti-aliasing for text sources, which for the most part you don't want to do, but I guess if you're doing like, you know, pixel art based fonts and, you know, hard edge fonts, you might want to preserve that. And so disabling that's pretty cool. There's more audio support for BSD operating systems. I didn't even know OBS ran on BSD operating systems. Okay. There's now a right click option for projectors so that they stay on top of other windows. Pretty cool. Quick Sync got an update for performance and improvements to simplifying the options so that it just made sense to everybody. So that's pretty cool. I love to see that Quick Sync is getting more support and that's gonna be more relevant soon with Intel's upcoming graphics cards and things like that. The transitions dock has a completely improved UI. It just, it, it, it makes things a lot more clear and a lot easier to use IMO. Editing your preview now has a more context sensitive cursor whenever you're resizing or moving things around so that you can more clearly tell what you're actually doing when editing your stream layout and things like that. Media sources streaming from remote URLs will now attempt to reconnect when they get disconnected instead of just staying completely, you know, deactivated. They've also improved the script context menu if you're managing Lewis scripts and things like that. The auto config wizard will now stick to standard resolutions instead of selecting oddball ones like 864p or 900p. They're now sticking to the normal resolutions. There's been a lot of movement towards sticking to standardized formats or streaming in general. This has been them just kind of keeping up with that. Pretty cool. You can now finally, I have been asking for this forever because it drove me nuts. You can now finally drag and drop to reorder items in a VLC media source playlist listing. Previously, if you added a bunch of items to the playlist and you wanted to change the order, you had to use the arrows or just remove and like start over and you can finally just drag them around. Thank goodness. A really cool trick now, you can now add slashes to your recording name format or prefix for your recording names to automatically create directories based on what's in the slash or recording or making uh, replays. This will make saving replays and organizing them and all of that a lot easier. I love it. An example of this is you can sort recordings by day and have it make new folders for each day or uh, the format you're recording or something like that. The LUT filter, which I use right now for my Sony cameras, is now more improved for being more accurate and running faster. Audio is finally defaulted to 48 kilohertz as the default. This, it's never made sense in modern days to launch. Well, I mean, it did when OBS was initially released, but the, in 2020, it doesn't make sense to launch 44.1 kilohertz as your default audio format. It just caused issues with people's have people having mismatch and things like that. So 48 kilohertz as the default, way to go. There's now a more user-friendly pop-up for when your NVIDIA drivers are out of date when you're encoding with NVENC, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there's now more virtual audio driver support within Mac OS. The settings prompt can now be closed with escape, which may be annoying, but helpful for some. And then generally they just have fixed a lot of bugs and crashes, which has been awesome to see. Like, I'm not kidding. The number of bugs and fixes that they fixed and, you know, small improvements they made on top of all of the big features is huge. This is a jam packed update, but there are still some features that were originally coming to OBS that aren't there yet. They're still in the uh, pull requests stage. I thought they were merged when I originally made this list. Apparently I was wrong. Uh, so they aren't fully finished features yet, but features that are coming to OBS that I wanna give you a teaser of because there's some that I'm very excited for. First and foremost, 
they are working on a feature where you can actually control OBS from the Windows thumbnail. So if you mouse over OBS in your Windows taskbar, and then you get that little thumbnail preview that's mostly real time. It'll have little pop up buttons on top of that where you could like hit stop recording real quick right from that, which is pretty neat and going to be helpful for people who don't edit their videos and can't chop off the end where they pull up OBS and hit stop recording. That will at least be a smoother end to their video. Uh, certain media players and stuff have this as well. There's a downstream keyer that they're working on for OBS, which allows them to do a lot of stuff. Basically, it's basically like a pinned global scene where you can have scenes that are always on top of every source that you have instead of having to manually add a nested scene to every scene that you have. So if you have a lower third or an overlay that you 100% want over top of every scene you have in OBS, then you can ping that as set up the downstream key or so that one is literally always on top and not have to manage it on a per scene basis, which is pretty handy. But again, still in the works. Uh, they were working on an automatic fix for dual GPU systems with it, where you got a black screen, especially problematic for laptops. Still in the works. They're working on adding a zoom option for scene items where you hold control and then scroll in and out if you have the source selected to like quickly zoom in and out like this. I say like this. I don't actually have the button. There we go. So I could quickly go like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. They have, they're working on a zoom option for that, which will be a lot of fun for people who do creative uses of it. And overall, you know, pretty cool. Lastly, they were rework, reworking the T-Bar for transitions to actually work, you know, reset more how actual T-Bar hardware works. This is a, a literal bar for like transitions where on a hardware system, you would have a bar. This is scene one, this is scene two. You slide it over from one to two and the transition happens over that time. You can stop it in the middle. You can go back and forth. Well, it kind of resets and didn't cooperate with that kind of stuff. And that was a limitation keeping it from working with actual hardware, typically. That hardware doesn't work with OBS. This is that next step to getting hardware transitioning working in OBS, which is pretty cool. So here are all the new features coming to OBS, at least as of this exact moment for version 26. Now keep in mind, this is the first of what is usually five or six release clients, which are basically alphas or betas that they put out, let the public test, uh, you know, stress test the features, make sure everything works, add in some feature fixes. Usually they don't add in features, but every once in a while they will. I will cover if there's more added. Uh, but I just wanted to cover as well as some features you can look forward to whenever the next update might be. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I hope you have learned something. If you're completely lost as to what the heck is going on in any of this OBS stuff, I have a full OBS masterclass that will teach you literally everything you need to know about OBS Studio. It will be linked in the video description. Again, go check us out on Discord where you can get some free assets for your stream and for general content creation. Uh, Eposfox.gg slash Discord. Hit the bike, like, bike button? The bike button? Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm your stream professor, Epos Fox. I'll see you next time.